from the aftermath of my 24 hour Zwift ride, welcome to the GCN show. Good night. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, after Manon's irritating group ride of the weekend, we're asking who are the worst types of cyclists to ride with? Are you one of them? Some nail-biting photo finishes from Amstel Gold, Hack and Bodges, your weekly inspiration, plus science that show that cyclists might not be human. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Mark Cavendish is back. Having not had a win for three years, last week at the Tour of Turkey, he took not one, not two, not three, but four stage victories. And the last win was actually his 150th win of his career, which is quite a milestone for the world's greatest ever sprinter. Indeed. Now, we also learnt last week that aero gains really do make a difference between winning and losing, certainly if last week's races had anything to do with it. Here is the photo finish from Brabant Appeal's women's race. Ruth Winder up top took the victory, even though it kind of doesn't really look like it. And then in the men's Amstel Gold race, Tom Pidcock was beaten by Wout van Aert by a hair's breadth as well. Away from racing, we learnt that Harrison Ford rode a thousand miles at the age of 78. Yeah, how cool is that? I did not know that Indiana Jones was a bike rider, nor did I know that Han Solo was a bike rider as well. Mm. But thanks to Brian Peters on GCN's community Facebook page, we do now. Apparently Ford's ride was down through Mexico and judging from the paparazzi photos that we saw, he's got a great taste in bikes, riding a Colnago C64, no less. I tell you, I would love to go for a bike ride with Harrison Ford. That would be cool. It would be pretty cool. Now this weekend, I was reminded you need to choose your riding buddies very carefully. I was out on a ride, on a group ride, and a rider punctured. Now, I was happy to step in and lend him a spare tube, but this rider never brings spares out. Someone always has to bail him out, and it does get pretty annoying like that friend that never gets the round in at the pub. That is annoying, I see, yeah. but it gets worse for the rider that's never prepared on a group ride. They now don't come with face masks, which means they can't ever get the round in on a ride. You can't buy the coffees, got no face mask, can't go into the coffee shop, double whammy. Yeah, that is a that's a pretty good excuse not to get the coffees in. But there are worse types of riders. For example, one I hate is the chatterbox. They never stop talking. Even up a 28% gradient climb, they're not out of breath. They keep on talking. I cannot imagine riding with that type of person, man, quite frankly. It's like the landscape that you ride through, going from kind of brown and gray to vivid and green. It's just so exciting. I'll give it a rest, I, please. I don't know what you're trying to say. I thought that was really interesting, that stuff, but um... I mean, I think a bit of chat on a bike ride's good. And actually, the only time it's a problem is when you're dealing with the Mona. Mona? The Mona, yeah. Now, I get that bike riding is a great opportunity to pedal away life's stresses and strains, but don't load it up onto me and certainly don't moan about bike riding or moan about your fitness or lack thereof or moan about your bike or moan about the weather or moan about your coffee. All right, or moan... nice. Stop. Stop moaning now. Right. For me, alarm bells start ringing when the tech geek rocks up. Fully aero, fully optimised, all the gear, but the first to get dropped. But always handy with a good excuse. It's been four days since I ultrasonically cleaned my chain. Just see the watts hemorrhaging. Oh, I don't know. I think the tech geek is harmless. You know, as long as you don't get stuck alongside them talking about yeah. ultrasonic cleaning. That'd be the worst. It would, yeah. Um, now, we've often talked here on GCN about how cycling can be a little bit stuffy, a bit snobby perhaps. We've got a lot of unwritten rules and yeah. we're not typically very good about educating new riders as to the unwritten rules. But some are there for good reason, particularly in group riding. They stop people getting frustrated with each other when they're hangry or really tired. One of them is that if you sit on and you don't do a turn on the front in the wind, then you're not allowed to sprint up hills or for town signs. What are you looking at me for? I wasn't going anywhere near the front with Hank doing 45 kilometers per hour. That's a Merton pacing session, not a group ride. Well, that is a fair point actually, and arguably even worse than sitting on and sprinting is the rider that sits on the front and makes it fractionally too hard for everyone else to enjoy. This group ride can sometimes be known as the Death March, and I have been known to um, 
well, be guilty of this myself. From yeah, time I was. To time. I was going to get on to you. The over competitive half wheeler. Just pin a number on a race. <laughs> well, that is a fair point. And actually, I'm quite tempted this summer. Oh. Watch, watch this space. We'll oh. see what happens. Lastly, there is also the much rarer beast, the lone wolf. Rarely spotted, in fact, on group rides. But when they do show up, there is no social etiquette. I mean, there would definitely be no waiting for riders who have punctures or who get dropped. There would definitely be no coffee stops. And in fact, pretty sure there would be no conversation at all either. No. The lone wolf prefers to ride alone, and we preferred if they did too. Do you recognise yourself in this list? Are you guilty of any of them? Yeah, if you are, don't worry, because there is still time to change, or indeed, there is a slim chance that you may well find someone that's willing to put up with your quirks and so ride with you. Mm. I, um, I definitely am guilty. I think of most of these. Yeah, I think you are, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a general terrible person to ride with, but, uh, but there we go. Yeah. Let us know if we missed any by leaving them in the comment section below. It's now time for GCN Inspiration, where we pick out three of our favourite pictures that you've been uploading to the GCN app. Yeah, each one will win a prize, starting with third place that wins a GCN Elite water bottle, 550 millimetres, millimetres, millilitres. This is the photo. It's been uploaded by S Brown 123 Hello Tintin. And yes, hello Tintin. For those of you that don't know, this is uh, a regular haunt for us, isn't it? Possibly my favourite place to ride a bike in the British Isles. Uh, I mean, it's not actually that good, but... But you seem to rave about it all I the time. I rave about so. it all the time. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> there is also a new path that goes down a disused railway through a tunnel that's also a bat sanctuary. This is what I've been learning about, and, uh, and that's what this picture is. So it's kind of a bit, it resonates with me, perhaps more deeply than the photo quality yeah. suggests. <laughs> But there we go. Thank you very much for sending that one in. In second place this week, winning a GCN World Logo t-shirt in black and gold and a zigzag arse saver, we have Xyla64. And this is going to the Sun Road Glacier National Park. And nice. every year before the road opens to cars, it's open to bikes only for a month while they clear the snow to prepare the roads. How cool is that? That is proper cool. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Uh, first place this week, though, is Inspirational in Spades, sent in by Cycle for Fun. Giant on duty, baby Talitha Wanjiru, eight years old, decided to ride with us for an 84 kilometer ride from Nakuru to Gilgil Town. She's the youngest cyclist to cover such a long distance. Oh my word, at times she got tired and I couldn't help but assist her to get to the finish point. That is cool. 84 kilometers? I think that, I'd struggle to ride that far now. I know, that's bonkers, yeah. isn't it? That's seriously impressive. Um, well, and like I say, very inspirational, so thank you very much for sending that one in. Um, I don't think I said what you want. A GCN Core Grey hoodie, a GCN Word logo t-shirt in black and gold, and a GCN Elite water bottle, 550 millilitres in clear. That's super cool. Well, yeah, thank you very much for sending all of those in. And uh, of course, next week, we'll be picking three more inspirational photos out as well. So make sure you keep uploading them to the GCN app, where, of course, you can also look at what everyone else has been uploading and like and comment on them. It's now time for cycling shorts. Next up, cycling shorts. And something that Dan and Connor spoke about on last week's show is the UCI's bottle throwing rule. So there has been an outcry from fans and riders as riders are immediately disqualified from the race if they are caught throwing a bottle away. Yes. Now, some riders actually have been having a bit of fun with this rule whilst watching the race in on the weekend on TV. Uh, I couldn't help but notice a few riders kind of pretending to throw their bottle away, having a bit of mega bants with the commissaires, clearly. As of the 17th of April, the rules have slightly changed. Riders won't be disqualified immediately after throwing a bottle, but in a one-day race, they will get two opportunities. If they are caught the first time throwing a bottle, they will get a fine, but if they are caught the second time, that's when they will be disqualified and thrown out of the race. Yeah, stage races are slightly different. So first offence is a fine. Second offence, a minute time penalty, which would be pretty pretty much a hammer blow in some races. Uh, and then finally, third offence, they'll get DQ'd. Basically, don't throw your bottles away. Never. Mm. It's not going to end well. But, no. I'm, but I'm glad they've changed the rules slightly. It was a bit harsh for throwing a bottle. You get chucked out of the race. It was, yeah. yeah. 
we won't go into it any further, but yes, I too am glad. Uh, now, one race that we've also been following this last week is the Science and Sport Tour de Lunso, which was taking place in Sierra Leone. Now, as well as some great racing, we couldn't help but think that perhaps the Tour de France could learn a thing or two about post-race celebrations. Check this out. <laughs> better than a stuffy old podium, isn't it? Yeah, that's how to do it, isn't it? Here's a question for you. Do you think what we wear as cyclists makes us less human to motorists? No. No. Dr. Lim, a lecturer at the Queensland University, wants to find out. We spotted this on Road CC, and he's been inspired by a 2019 study that showed that more than half of Australian motorists don't see cyclists as humans. That's terrifying, isn't it? I remember when yeah. that research came out initially, and it's unfathomable. The research suggests that this dehumanisation might be the main trigger for acts of outright aggression towards cyclists. And Dr Lim wants to find out if this is true. So there is a new online survey up and there's a link to it in the description beneath this video if you want to take part. For my money, I don't think it's a lycra thing. I think it's just a not being in a car thing. Yeah, I agree it? with you. Yeah. I think pedestrians probably suffer from the same thing. Yeah, lycra's not that weird. No, I don't think it yeah. is. Well, maybe it is. Mm. Not to me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, right, we mentioned a moment ago about the UCI softening its stance on bottle throwing. It's definitely not softening its stance on recently outlawed riding positions. Two riders fell foul last week, both got DQ'd, one of whom was Alex Richardson, no relation, uh, who tried to get around the rules by keeping his little fingers gently attached to his brake levers. Very uh, sneaky. Yeah, smart ass, yeah. quite frankly. They weren't having any of it though, he got kicked out of the race that night. But since then, the UCI have created a handy guide that even features a picture of Matt Stevens in GCN kit from 2015. Yeah, the, it's the weirdest thing that yeah. they've got this six-year-old photo of Matt in GCN kit. Um, and slightly ironic really as well that he's showing the pros what to do. But I think there is a good chance that he was clipped in when would, that would photo help. was taken. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right, we've got a bit of GCN shop news now. We've got some mega new GCN Castelli jerseys in the shop in some exclusive colourways, I'm told. They are part of the competition core range with new and improved fit. They're made of a strata mesh fabric to better regulate your temperature. Plus there is dimpled tailwind stretch fabric on the shoulder, side panels and pockets and sides to further enhance your performance. Whatever you do, Manon. Don't memorise that and then tell everyone about it on the group ride. Because that would put yeah. you in one of those categories. I'd be a tech but, nerd. Uh, anyway, the jerseys look great and... Uh, they well, do, yeah. They, yeah, they look mega and they sound fast too. Uh, right, we'll also tell you about the two films that are coming up on GCM Plus this week. Tales of Endurance and Ketones, Are They Really Rocket Fuel? Both cracking films, although I would say that. Uh, but in Tales of Endurance, we hear from some of the best riders in the sport and get some of their trade secrets. And in Ketones, we investigate to see whether they're half as good as the hype suggests. Athletes never produce ketones. You might be able to use them to provide extra energy. I've enlisted the help of an ex-professional to try and put ketones to the test. Three, two, one. I have no doubt that ketones can improve performance. Wow, what a difference. What's a little more controversial is whether that's actually performance enhancing. There are a lot of side effects. Nausea, vomiting. Oh. Ketones will suppress your appetite. I certainly don't feel like eating the cheese sandwich that Connor does right now. It's time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. Do you not? Know nah. Oh. Just keep it cool, you know. It's what Play it cool. It's what, what me and Dan are renowned for. Yeah, Playing you it guys cool. are so cool. Yeah. Um, anyway, first up this week, uh, one in from Kitwell78. Lockable cargo hatch in a Velomobile. Oh, one for you there, man. <laughs> Definitely a hat, can keep a lot of snacks in there. <laughs> Get a little pe bit peckish yeah. in the Velomobile. Well, yeah, you've got to say, that's pretty cool, isn't it? 82% yeah. of you said hack. I'd, I'd say hack, really? Man. Yeah, definitely. A little lock in it, so... Good Get stuff. No one's stealing your snacks in there. No. Right then, uh, next up, we've got this one from Red Island Cycles Berlin. A deer antler bike and helmet hanger. Uh, mm. Believe it or not, we found the antler in a street in Berlin. Generally, we don't like hunting, um, but we found it. So there we go. Um, I think that's quite cool, it actually. It does make quite a good bike stand, yeah. It I, does, doesn't it? I wouldn't it? recommend going out hunting for deers and just 
no. dealing the horns. But if you do stumble upon one on a Berlin street, I'd say yeah, go for it. feel free. Oh, I like that. That's a hack from me. Yeah, next in from Alex, Obeya's, Obeya broken gear cable. 10 kilometers into an epic ride and Tom M's gear cable snapped. Oh, no. The old reversing it through the derailleur trick was enough to select a usable gear to ride home. Nice. That's straight out of GCN's yeah. roadside hack playbook, that one. You take credit um, for that one, Si. Yes, I mean, I don't think I invented it, but I definitely made a video about it many years ago. <laughs> um, but it is a good one. Probably too complicated to explain here, but you basically thread, you take the cable out your shifter, you pop it directly into the rear derailleur through the barrel adjuster, and then it means you can tighten the derailleur underneath the right bit of your cassette, and you can even index it using the barrel adjuster. So there you go. So 100% hack from me. I can't believe 28% of you thought it was a bodge. That's just ridiculous. Maybe they just didn't understand. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, who could not understand exactly. after that explanation? Uh, right then, next up, we've got this from uh, Maki Mark. Ooh, customized shoes. Jira Very Empire nice. by Nike Resurrection. Uh, another pair of Jira shoes given a Nike makeover. Um, these were boring silver. You can't have boring silver shoes. Um, before bringing them back from the dead with a white main coat and neon fade swooshes. So there we go. You wouldn't um, want to take them on a muddy ride, would you? Uh, no, you absolutely no. wouldn't. But then I suppose if you did get a muddy, um, you just repaint them. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Paint them black. Yeah, paint them black. Yeah. Maybe have like a splatter fade, brown and light brown. That goes well. Yeah, brown um, and brown. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's a hack. Um, yeah, I'd say that was a hack. Yeah. Very nice. I mean, I do feel like Giro shoes are, are nice enough not to draw Nike swooshes on, if, if I'm honest. Maybe they're but, just a big um, fan of Nike. Well, maybe they are. You know, there's like that one pair of shoes that you just really want, but you can't have them for whatever reason. So paint them. Yeah, just make your own. Yeah, there you go, there's a hack. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, I see it. Well um, put, man on. <laughs> next in from Watson, a 3D printed rocket hack. magnet holder for extra speed. Okay, so I was, it was 3D printed, it said hack. Yeah. I see what they've done there. Yeah, extra magnet power on their spokes. There is a problem, though, with having What's a that? rocket shape. Well, so it's going to be giving you extra thrust when it's going over the top of your wheel, but then the boosters will be firing the wrong way when your wheel is going, when it's going underneath. So maybe just... it's helping the wheel turn, Yeah. You think. So it's still providing positive thrust. I don't know. It's too complicated maybe for it's my one for taste. Ollie. Yeah, Sciency. exactly. Yeah. Sciency one. Uh, one for, do you want to discuss it at length on a group ride? I suspect. Well, that's something see. to talk about, isn't it? It is indeed. Um, anyway, hack for me, 3D printed. What about you? Yeah, hack, yes. Yeah, there we go. 74% cool. of you said that was hack as well. Uh, next up, we've got this from uh, Jorg Danny Ow. Ow. Mm. I don't know what sound a J and an R make when they're put <laughs> together. Uh, any Alger. I do apologise. Um, anyway, custom paint pen and overactive imagination. Um, a few white paint pens. Thieves will have a hard time trying to hide this bike. And they will. Look at that. Yeah, I think that's awesome. It's basically just the kind of doodle that you do when you're on the phone, isn't it? But on your front four. Really boring conversation, so you start start doodling, yeah. Exactly. But no one's gonna have no one's in the world is gonna have those forks. That's very unique. But it's only 51% hack. Thought it'd be more. Mm. Maybe you should give it a try, Manon. After the success of your custom paint, you should... I think uh, that was a one-off, to be honest. Well, I'd start doodling on it and see what happens. Yeah, I like could that. give it a go. Personally, I think that's a hack from me. Yeah. Uh, next up from Andrew. When you just got, can't stand up to clean your bike, you sit. Nice. <laughs> An old fly-tipped bike in his mum's garden. Disgraceful. as a workshop tool. Stool. Amazing. Well, there you go. There's like a like a terrible story turned good. Yeah, that's. Pr I mean, I hate standing up at any circumstances. So if I can sit down and clean my bike, that's even better. That does look cool. Doesn't and to be fair, you know, if you don't have your bike on a stand and it's on the floor cleaning your bike, you just have to like bend down. And yeah. Like, you're lowered there. You're well, there you go. I do like those little workshop stools like that. I think yeah. that's cool, and I like the fact that the saddle's pointing the other way. Common mistake with those is to have the saddle pointing. Yeah as it should be, it. But, uh, but there we go. Uh, right then, one last hack, forward slash, oh, was it a hack or a bodge, did we decide? Oh, oh hack. A hack, yeah, yeah, I think that's a hack. Uh, Definitely. And 77, 77, sorry, percent of you said that that was a hack as well. Last then for this week, uh, Miguel Avolio sent in this one, broken front derailleur cable hack. Two broken cables this week. This one, very neat. It's the old stick trick. Yes, just, Find the correctly uh, sized stick, 
jam it between your frame and your front mech, and boom, away you go. In fact, you could even have two sticks, and then you could uh, keep keep changing. Uh, yeah, that's a cork. Is it? That's a wine cork or a champagne cork. That serves me right for not reading the description. It's a cork. Well, where'd you find that? Where's he been I'm riding? sure Dan's got a few. Yeah, good point. Actually, Dan, Dan, Dan's a good person to ride with if you ever need a spare cork. Um, <laughs> right, hack from me. Hack. I like that one. Yeah, 64% of you said that was a hack as well. And thank you very much, Manon, for rescuing me. Uh, despite the fact I've been bloody on that. Stick. <laughs> that's not a stick, that's a cork. Well, yeah, all right. <laughs> Second look, it looks like a cork. <laughs> Time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to do is put a witty caption in the comment section down below. Relating to a photo we're just about to give you. First though, results from last week where we had this particularly brutal looking photograph of Simon Geschke. I'm not just recognising his bottom there, by the way. You sure? I just read, yeah, just read here. Sure. Um, anyway, the winner is Donatia O'Connor. Unfortunately, there will be no cycling shorts section on this week's show due to lack of material. We should have said this before cycling shorts. We should have done. That's have genius, done. though. I like that very much. Uh, right, anyway, Manon, on to this week's photograph. You yeah. going to get started? When Mum says there's fajitas for dinner. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> ah, that's a picture of Mariana Voss, of course, celebrating fajitas. For dinner. Yeah. And definitely not, not winning a race. Again, Wevel again. No, there we go. Right, if you think you can get close to Manon's caption, then stick it in the comment section down below and we'll pick a winner for next week. <laughs> comments of the week now. As ever, you've been leaving some fantastic, insightful, and sometimes hilarious comments under our videos this last week. We picked out one or two, quite a lot under the what to do in the event of a crash video that uh, you and Connor. Well, as, as Jeff Foon said, you, you sacrificed yourself for the greater good for that video. The injuries look brutal. Yeah, it was, it was tough. But they hurt a lot, but you know, anything for a good video. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, as Tom Stevens has said, um, serious commitment um, crashing for a YouTube video. So, uh, yeah, Connor was fully committed to that video. He, he had a few nasty gashes. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah, that worth doing. Anyway, one for the ages, that one. Yeah. Uh, six changes in cycling in the past 10 years and one from Family Spitzer. The best way cycling has changed this decade is definitely GCN. Ah! Oh, that's such a nice comment, isn't it? It's not just comment of the week, that's comment of the century, that one. It is, Or maybe yeah. comment of the decade, perhaps, more, more importantly. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there we go. That's very kind, very, very kind. kind. Uh, underneath the ultimate bonk video, which um, luckily got through YouTube's censorship, thing with that title. Could have, could have been touch and go actually. Uh, Tom <laughs> Barnard said, uh, I'm genuinely surprised they didn't try to kill off Hank again with this challenge. And yeah, I mean, that is a good point. We just felt that Hank would probably not notice if he'd bonked and would just keep on going regardless. Yeah. He'd probably still be out there, wouldn't he? He would, yeah, yeah just still going, wondering, you know, yeah. why he's going ever so slightly slower than he was four weeks ago. But uh, <laughs> anyway, there we go. Um, we did try and kill him off just the day later, though, didn't we? Yeah. In a hundred, when Hank did 100k a day for seven days. Piazza 99, so normal service has just resumed. Han Hank makes himself suffer. <laughs> and that, that was a hard week for Hank. I know he, he admitted he did crack a little bit. He did crack yeah, a little bit, it was yeah. a hard week. Um, Renny Vass, though, says, uh, and this will cheer Hank up, no end. Uh, yeah. Hank is the poster boy for the hold my beer meme. So there we go. And actually, that does. That's very true, isn't it? It does pretty yeah. much sum them up. Any yeah. challenge, Hank's back. I'll do it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Hold um, my beer. I'm off. Exactly. Right then, what uh, <laughs> is coming up this week? We've got a Hank challenge this week, haven't we? We have, actually, yeah. On Wednesday, we've got cycling nutritional myths to avoid. Ooh. On Thursday, we've got the tech show and Liege Baston Liege preview show. And on Friday, we've got challenges for bigger riders and how to overcome them. Yeah, Saturday, it's the aforementioned Hank challenge. Hank versus Hank's dad, the rematch, which I cannot wait to see. Uh, and then on Sunday, how does caffeine affect your cycling performance. So that should be super interesting. Make sure you check that one out. Um, we have, of course, got a whole stack of racing available on GCM Plus as well. It's the Tour of the Alps from Monday to Friday this week. If you haven't been keeping up to date with that, 
Of course, it's available on demand as well. Some restrictions do apply to territory, so make sure you check. We've also got men's and women's flesh well on on Wednesday, and also men's and women's the age bass on the age on Sunday too. So uh, a bumper week. A big week of racing. Absolutely, and of course, we're getting quite close to the Giro d'Italia now, which is available worldwide, uh, apart from Latin America and New Zealand. But uh, there we go. So uh, super cool, super exciting. Isn't Very it? exciting week. There we go. Right. Man, on that pretty much brings us to the end of the GCN show for this it week, does, I think. It does, yeah. Thanks for having me this week. Well, pleasure as always. Yeah. Right, we will see you lot next week. If you enjoyed this one, please give it a big thumbs up. <laughs>